Good morning, friends. Welcome to Wake Up in the Word. We are Matthew chapter number eight. Come and join us. While you're getting there, let me ask you a question. Who do you trust? Who do you trust? Let's talk about who to trust and who not to trust this morning as we wake up in the Word. Remember from uh, my earlier days, I mean, as a, a child, a teenager, there used to be these big posters of some diabolical looking character that you could tell was evil and the two little words. <laughs> you know what? I think of that quite often when I hear politicians today trying to come up with crazy, ludicrous sounding schemes that common people know will not work. And then they just look at you and say, trust me, <laughs> just vote for the bill. Read it later. But, you know, I mean, we're just going, we're going to get this done. Listen, it scares me when we look at how often people's trust has been shall we say, abused. And then we look at Jesus, one who is able to look us square in the face and say, I got this. Trust me. We see the picture in Matthew chapter 8, beginning in verse 23. As Jesus and his disciples are on the shore of Galilee, ready to go to the other side. It says, as he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. But suddenly, verse 24, came up this violent storm that arose out of the sea, that the boat was being swamped by the waves. But Jesus kept sleeping. Now, hang on, Jesus had a tiring day, a lot of healings, a lot of preaching, teaching, a lot of stuff going on. He's kind of weary, needs a nap. Jesus is sound asleep while the storm is going on. Now, what does that tell you about Jesus? Does it tell you that he doesn't care or that he's got this under control, even though he's sound asleep. Listen to what happened in the next verse. So the disciples came and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we're going to die. <laughs> you could tell they were not happy at all. Apparently the waves were big, the situation was dire, and they could see the handwriting on the wall, so to speak, or should we say handwriting in the waves. It says, he said to them, why are you afraid, you of little faith? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the sea obey him. Well, you're finding out what kind of man this is. He's much more than a man. He's the God, man, he is your Messiah. He is the Lord. He is the one you can trust. And notice he rebuked them by saying, hey, what's your problem? Why are you so afraid? You have little faith. So great faith should be a blessing, right? That reminds me of another passage of scripture, one that Max Lucado comments on, and that's John 14, 1. Don't let your hearts be Trouble, trust in God, trust also in me. Do you trust Jesus today? I know when you look around at how crazy the world is going, you can often struggle with this simple statement. And how you address this question will affect everything you do today. Whether you're reacting in fear, as the disciples were reacting in the boat, or you're reacting in faith. Listen to what Lucado says about this particular passage. He said, you know, all of his words can be reduced to two. Trust me. Don't be troubled by things like the return of Christ. Don't be anxious about things you can't comprehend. Issues like the millennium and the antichrist are intended to challenge and stretch us, but not overwhelm and certainly not divide us. For the Christian, the return of Christ is not a riddle to be solved or a code to be broken, but rather a day to be anticipated. And all God's people said, Amen. Now, Jesus wants us to trust him. He doesn't want us to be troubled. So be, be reassured, my friends. This is the Jesus that wants you to walk in his peace and his calm every single day, even when the storm is going on all around us. Recognize that and know that you can have that peace in you regardless of what's happening in the world. So listen to what it says. He reassures us with these truths. We don't know when he'll come for us. We don't know how he will come for us. And we really don't even know why he would come for us. Oh, we have our ideas and opinions, but most of what we have is faith. 
Isn't that what Jesus said in the boat? Oh, you've little faith. Trust in God. Trust in me. I'll get you through the storm. He goes on to say, faith that he, that Jesus, has ample space and has prepared a place. And at the right time, he'll come so that we can be where he is. He will do the taking. It's up to us to do the trusting. That's what I grabbed a hold of this morning. We've got to be the ones willing to trust Jesus, especially when we don't even see the answers. We love to have it all kind of in a little bucket, easy to understand. Oh, I know what's going on because here I have it explained to me. Step one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you get the end, you push the button and everything's going to be fine. But when you can't see for the wind and the rain and the storm, how do you trust Jesus? Oh, my friends, recognize even the storm itself may be a part of God's plan. Don't ever forget, especially when fear seems to be knocking at your door. There's nothing to be afraid of. 365 times in the Bible, there is the statement that says, don't be afraid or fear not, something like that. One for every day of the year. Take one of those to heart today and recognize that you can give all your fears to Christ and you can walk in the faith that's necessary to trust him. Trust him today. And I'll see you again right here tomorrow as we wake up in his word.